Good morning and welcome to Friday's Thought for the Day. My name's Jane and I'm an ordinand, training for ministry in the Church of England. When I was a teacher, I worked with a wonderful Christian woman called Stella. She's now gone home to God, but I'm sure that hundreds of ex-pupils and many colleagues continue to remember her fondly. Stella had walked with Jesus for a long time and she had real wisdom. One thing that I remember her saying was that she really wanted to be an encourager, especially when it came to the leaders of her church. She used to talk about how geese fly in that amazing V formation. They work together, sharing a common goal and helping to reduce the drag as they fly vast distances. In fact, this strategy improves the overall efficiency of the flock by over 70%. And Stella told me that the geese actually honk to encourage the one at the front to keep going. In the same way, she said, we need to honk, metaphorically speaking, to encourage our leaders. I thought about Stella when I read today's Old Testament reading from Numbers chapter 20. There wasn't a lot of honking going on amongst the Israelites on this particular occasion. In fact, we're told that the whole Israelite community gathered together against Moses and Aaron, who had the difficult task of leading the people of God on their journey. The Israelites were really unhappy with the way they were being led, and they weren't afraid to make their views known. They'd had enough. The particular issue for them was water, but the pattern of their complaint is a familiar one. First, there's self-pity. Then there's the question, why have you done this to us? And finally, there's the predictable harking back to how things used to be. In this case, the Israelites remember fondly the time when they lived in Egypt, a place with figs and vines and pomegranates. They seem conveniently to have forgotten that they were brick-making slaves. I say it's a pattern that's familiar because I've seen it before, in me. How often have I been just as rebellious as those Israelites? Not necessarily publicly, in fact, not even out loud some of the time. But how often as a teacher did I disagree with the way a boss was handling a situation and focus on how his or her decisions disadvantaged me? How often did I question their wisdom and hark back to how things were better under a previous boss or in a previous school? There are always people in any workplace or any organisation who want to criticise those who have the responsibility of leadership. Maybe school staff rooms are particularly prone to it, but it can happen anywhere. It can even happen in churches. So this morning, when I thought about Stella, I decided that I want to be an encourager. I want to be the goose that's honking her encouragement to the one at the front, whether that's a community leader or a church leader or anyone else who has the awesome responsibility of leadership. After all, as I'm painfully aware, if all goes to plan, then it's not long until I'll be a leader too. And I know I'm going to need all the encouragement I can get. So would you like to join me in becoming an encourager this week? I'm going to send a card or letter to three people who have leadership responsibility. And I'm going to thank them for the ways in which they serve and bless my community. Perhaps you'd like to do the same. Wouldn't it be great if at this time when leading is so different and at times so challenging, our leaders received a flurry of encouragement? Well, take care. 